Hello everybody, wonderful souls in the world, wherever you are and from wherever you're listening to, welcome to a new episode of the Universal Mastermind, episode 3, from a very cold New York City, where we start our current tour. It's our last, I think, three days before we head over to Europe, and I can't wait to see how mellow Milan will be, it's our first station and uh, see all our Italian friends. Now that dear Pluto is in full sway in the house of Aquarius, and of course, as I mentioned many times before, it started having an effect on our second house subjects, which is finances and properties, and the collective money, of course, values, moral. It is quite fantastic to see how the universal blueprint manifests itself in our very human, worldly, social elements. The amount of wars and conflicts and oppositions, the desire for truth and authenticity, the need for justice and equality. As uncomfortable it is to watch and see and tear and live among those elements, it is necessary to see where and how we can contribute to the most peaceful and harmonious way through these transformative years and decades that Pluto represent. As we know, Pluto stays pretty much 20 years in a house, and therefore it changes a great deal of society. For those of you who are about my age, mid-50 and on, so... God wants us to live that long, we will see a very different, a very revolutionized environment, society, mindset, a way of life and a way of living. And those of you who have worked on themselves, embraced their shadows, embraced their true identity to the greatest possible deal, for them, this journey will be almost like a Disneyland ride because you are not approaching this journey from a place of resistance. This is, I hope for all of you, clear that any kind of resistance will lead to more resistance. Another thing I find absolutely fascinating is individuals who hardly left the country, hardly traveled, have suddenly injected themselves into the pain of people that reminds them of their own pain. I really believe that the reason why so many who are not Jewish and not Palestinians and not political even, suddenly have chosen sides and, as I said, inject themselves and project themselves into the pain of these hurt humans. For me, this represents an outlet, an outcry of our own pain just because we are justifying ourselves with our privileged living, no matter if we think the, uh, we are poor or rich or in any shape or form treated unjust, we in the Western world live quite a privileged existence. We have opportunities and knowledge and access and freedom. And it's interesting how sometimes a conflict can represent such a reflection of the turmoil that is in our own self. And in this world brimming with interconnectivity, I mean, we have never been so connected before in our history, and yet we have never been so alone in the history. And in this world where every story, every pain seems to be just a click away, it's easy to feel compelled to dive headfirst into the struggles of others. While empathy is undoubtedly a cornerstone of human connection, there exists a delicate balance between offering support and inadvertently exasperating someone else's pain by injecting ourselves into their narrative. It is the age-old saying, walk a mile in someone else's shoes. And yet, amidst our own 
you know, well-intentioned efforts to understand and console, we often forget the nuance inherent in respecting others' journey. The impulse to offer solutions, provide unsolicited advice, our share of our own similar experience can, at times, overshadow the simple yet profound act of listening. There's an undeniable allure to sharing our own tales of triumph over adversity, hoping to inspire and provide solace. God knows social media, especially TikTok, is all about filterless, raw sharing our experience. However, in doing so, we risk overshadowing the lived experiences of those currently grappling with their own struggles. Our stories, though born from empathy, can inadvertently become a barrier to truly hearing and validating the pain of others. Moreover, the act of injecting ourselves into someone else's pain can stem from a place of discomfort. We're sitting in the discomfort of another suffering. It's human nature to seek resolution, to alleviate pain wherever we encounter it. Yet in our haste to offer solutions, we may overlook the inherent value of simply bearing witness to another's pain without judgment or agenda. Respecting the boundaries can be a very quiet process. To quietly stand for someone else without being part of the experience or believing that their pain is your pain, if in reality it is not. And so, indeed, respecting the boundaries of another, another's experience necessitates a humble acknowledgement of our own limitations. While our intentions may be pure, our understanding is inherently filtered through the lens of our own experiences, our biases and perceptions. Recognizing that each individual's journey is uniquely their own underscores the importance of humility in our own interactions with others' pain. So what does that mean to respectfully navigate the terrain of another suffering? It begins with the willingness to listen without interruption or judgment. It entails holding space for another's emotions, even when they are messy, uncomfortable or unfamiliar. It involves validating their feelings without attempting to minimize or fix their pain. Not everything can be fixed. Not every wound can be healed. Here in New York, I've been with many people and clients and friends, of course, and we talk about the horror that happens in the world, especially when we talk about Israel and, and what happens in Palestine. And... What we have here are two tribes who are wounded. And I really believe that the wound will never be healed. I think when something like, like this persecution that the Jewish people have gone through in their history, I think that causes a pain that is, to me, impossible to heal. I would not know where to start. With the Palestinians, it's the same thing. They are being hijacked by their own people being used and manipulated. And they don't see that they're not permitted to heal their wound. And the question is, can they heal their wound? If something is so wounded, so traumatized, can this wound ever heal? And I did console my, in these cases, I always talk to my guide and I said, what is possible? And he said, not every wound needs a healing. Not every wound can be healed. And that is totally fine because the non-healing can provide us with a memory, a consciousness to not forget. We see this very much in Germany. Um, of course, we lived in Hollywood for so many years and every year we have the Oscars. Every year when a German movie is somehow nominated, it has to do with the Nazis. It has to do with the Holocaust. It has to do with the suffering of the Jewish people and minorities that have gone through. And the genocides around the world, much more cruel and much more um, painful in numbers that we can imagine. The largest genocide and the largest wound is in Africa. When you see that the largest genocide happened in Africa. We have to learn our history. And I do believe, again, 
And I understand that some wounds cannot be healed. And so people say, oh my God, look at the Germans. Another movie, another Holocaust, another Nazi film, another this. Why is it always the same thing? You know, I ex exasperate this, of course, but I do believe, I really do believe that a German mindset remembers and is so conscious about the wound they caused by not letting the wound heal and by that be excused, be forgotten even. We remind ourselves to the arts what happened and when a German director, a writer, an author, a speaker speaks of the wound that the country created by not allowing the wound to close, we allow ourselves to learn continuously to not again fall in that pit, in that void of that kind of tragedy. And I think the same thing here is happening. And true empathy lies not in the sharing of our own stories only, but in the genuine desire to understand and support another in theirs. It's about meeting others where they are without imposing our own agenda or expectations onto the healing process. It's a silent acknowledgement that sometimes the most profound act of kindness is simply being there, bearing witness to another's pain with an open heart and a listening ear. In a world fraught with pain and uncertainty, our capacity for empathy is a beacon of hope amidst the darkness. So let us tread lightly in the sacred space of another's suffering, honoring the journey with humility, compassion, and above all the profound gift of our presence. For in the gentle embrace of empathy, we will not only solace for the wounded soul, but also the transformative power of human connection that we are so desperately in need now. And of course, we are entering the concept of mindfulness. Fasta did a whole video on mindfulness and the importance of the practice of it. Mindfulness and navigating pain are deeply interconnected practices offering truly a powerful framework for cultivating resilience and compassion and inner peace in the face of adversity. And I wanted to give you a couple of thoughts on how to best integrate mindfulness when you're going through your shadow work. Shadow work can be pain work. And again, think about this a little bit and play with the idea not every wound can be healed. And not every wound and every pain should be forgiven and should be healed. But transformed. To cultivate self-compassion in mindfulness, we are invited to approach our pain with gentleness and self-compassion. Instead of resisting or denying our emotions, we acknowledge them with kindness and understanding. This involves treating ourselves as we would a dear friend, offering words of comfort and reassurance in times of distress. Pain often arises from dwelling on past regrets or worrying about the future. And I want to say something about negative emotions at this point because we had so many examples now. A dear friend of ours was robbed. She wasn't at home, but somebody broke into her house and got robbed. And this is somebody who is very conscious, works a lot, does everything that spiritual we are meant to do. And I was wondering why would that happen to her? What is the resonance? There is no other reason than resonance for anything we experience. Do we choose consciously to be robbed? Of course not. That would be insane. But it happens. And so what is the resonance? And I asked my guide to simply explain in a few words, why are we getting robbed? Why are we getting scammed? Why are we getting um, misled? In, in the larger sense. And my guide said, in this case, somebody who worries about finances will get robbed at some point. So the feeling, the pain, the negativity, whatever you want to call it, of worry, of fear, invites a robber to steal 
what causes you worry and therefore by robbing you of the worry you are being liberated of the worry um, I hope you're sitting down and you're all having now a crash helmet on but this is how the universe works the more we entertain worrying emotions denying emotions resisting emotions the more the universe will send something or someone to liberate us from that emotion and that's what we call sometimes being robbed being kidnapped being scammed being hurt being lied to being betrayed you understand and this only happens and i want to say why this is so important this only happens based on what you focus on which will be our practice at the end of this podcast and so again we acknowledge emotions with kindness and understanding you know forgiveness is a very divine quality and we are not on that level yet so please don't try it's okay to not be able to forgive and forget so treating ourselves as we would to others is a hermetic and spiritual truth and so when you worry and when you pay attention to long too long to negativity your mindfulness encourages you to anchor your awareness in the present moment where you can find respite from the relentless pull of your thoughts and emotions by focusing on your breath bodily sensations or the sights and sounds around you you create a sanctuary of calm amidst life's storms mindfulness invites us to observe our pain without judgment or attachment rather than labeling our experiences good or bad we simply observe them with curiosity and openness and this allows us to cultivate a sense of spaciousness around our pain freeing us from the grip of reactivity and enabling us to respond with i would say a greater wisdom hopefully and clarity and to embrace impermanence we are being taught that all things including pain are impermanent by recognizing the transient nature of our experiences we loosen the grip of suffering and open ourselves to the possibility of healing and transformation nothing is static everything moves everything continues everything is in flow and this doesn't mean denying or suppressing our pain but rather holding it with a sense of perspective and understanding the practice of self-reflection is the basis of all spirituality and it encourages self-inquiry, self-reflection as pathways to greater self-awareness and understanding through practices such as meditation, journaling or contemplative walks we can explore the deeper roots of our pain and uncover the wisdom hidden within it this process of inner exploration fosters always a sense of empowerment and resilience in the face of our challenges and even when you're in in pain right in the center of it a mindful consciousness invites you to cultivate gratitude for the blessings in our lives and to savor moments of joy and beauty by shifting our focus away from what is lacking or what is painful we awaken to the abundance and richness that surrounds us nourishing our spirits and uplifting our hearts Mindfulness is not a solitary endeavor, but a shared journey of feeling and growth and seeking support from loved ones or spiritual mentors, teachers, healers, therapists, psychologists can provide invaluable guidance and companionship along the way. Through genuine connection and vulnerability, we find solace in the knowledge that we are not alone in our struggles. And ultimately, navigating our pain is a deeply personal and ongoing journey it requires patience and courage and a willingness to embrace the full spectrum of human experience with open arms and an open heart by cultivating this mindfulness in our lives we discover a profound sense of peace and wholeness that transcends the limitations of pain and suffering i was very impressed many many years ago by a case where a mother's son i believe was murdered and they caught the murderer they indicted him and 
after the, of course, you know, there was a court case and um, a life sentence for the killer. And the mother was asked, have you forgiven now? Because she was a, um, I think she was a Catholic or a Christian minded person. And so they asked her, in your faith, uh, did you find that strength to finally forgive that person? And she says, no, and I will never forgive this person, but I gave it to God. And that was such a profound statement that she said, I'm incapable. I'm not on that divine level to forgive this. Even if I would say it, it would not be true, because this is an unforgivable act to some degree. But I gave it to God. I gave it to a higher purpose. I gave it to a higher mind. I gave it to a higher being. I gave it to something that is built into compassion and understanding and love. And it's totally okay that I am not part of this yet. Ultimately, all pain comes from a sensation of not being enough, not being valuable, not being wanted or loved. And so there is a very powerful mantra. I am that. I am. I am enough. I am that, comma, I am, describes very much how in so many scriptures, especially when the divine or Yahweh speaks to Moses and says, based on the question, who are you, what is your name? He says, I am that, comma, I am. Everything I focus upon, I am. I focus on something, I must be that. We also have a saying, you are what you eat. Or my mother used to say, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. Unfortunately, she was always right about this. Mothers can be right, let's get over it. But I am that I am, and I am enough, hold a profound transformative power when embraced with understanding and intention. And our practice piece today is a recording that I'm going to add to the end, to the tale of this podcast, which is the I am that I am meditation. And all you need to do is you can repeat it, and you can feel it, and you can embrace it, because when you are what you are and you choose consciously by what you're focusing on what you're inviting into your life to become and to be and therefore what you focus on creates enough of you to be and to exist i am that i am encapsulates the essence of self-acceptance and self-realization it echoes the sentiment of being present in the moment acknowledging oneself as a complete and whole entity. By affirming I am that I am, one recognizes their intrinsic worthiness and authenticity. It's a declaration of sovereignty over one's identity, free from external validation or comparison. Embracing this mantra encourages self-empowerment and fosters a deep sense of inner peace and contentment. I am enough. This sentence reinforces the notion of self-love and self-compassion. It serves as a gentle reminder that one's inherent value is not contingent upon external achievements, validation, or circumstances. By affirming I am enough, one cultivates a profound sense of self-worth and self-acceptance. It's an invitation to release the burden of perfectionism and embrace oneself exactly as they are, flaws and all. Embracing this mantra fosters a deep sense of inner fulfillment and wholeness. So to incorporate these sentences into your mindfulness practice by repeating them silently or aloud during meditation or moments of reflection, Allow the words to resonate deeply within you like an echo through the universe, anchoring yourself in the present moment and cultivating a sense of inner peace and acceptance. And when faced especially with pain or challenges, use these affirmations to anchor yourself in resilience and self-compassion. Remind yourself that you are worthy and capable of navigating life's 
even difficulties with grace and strength if you believe that difficulties must be part of life. Because all you experience, all you call reality, is nothing but a result of your focus. By embracing these sentences, you cultivate a mindset of empowerment, self-empowerment, allowing you to navigate yourself with greater ease and clarity through your path. Ultimately, the transformative power of these mantras lies in their ability to shift your mindset, your perception, and therefore you shift the inner light, and therefore the light must follow that intention and that focus. Therefore, the universe must respond to the focus. And this is how it's always been, always will be, always is. There is no other way than this hermetic law and practice. And so, I'm adding here a little piece that I hope you will like, which is nothing more than embracing these sentences, embracing this quality and this power of being enough for yourself and to allow others to be enough for where they are in their own lives and to have compassion and patience and understanding, even if it's really challenging. That was a note to myself as well, by the way. And so before I guide you into the practice, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I've been told that the last two times I haven't even mentioned it or didn't put it in the video form. You see, I always forget. These things are the least of my problems and the least of my interest. But again, but I hope that you find value and wisdom and motivation and inspiration, all of these little, little snippets that come out of my head, basically. And please like, share and subscribe so that I know that it's worth continuing and um, enjoy the following piece. Next time, we're going to meet each other from Milan, Milano, Italy. See, I go to the real Milan, um, where undoubtedly, uh, I will eat a lot of pasta, I will gain more weight, and I will enjoy it. Until we meet again, sending you all love. Wherever you are, whatever you do, immerse yourself in these words, repeat them, sing them, think them. I am that I am that I am and I am enough I am I am that that I am I am and I am enough I am I am that that I am I am and I am I am enough enough I am that I am that I am and I am I am enough that that I am and I am enough I am I am that that I am I am and I am enough I am that I am that I am I am I am that enough I am and I am enough I am I am that that I am I am and I am enough I am that I am that I am and I am I am enough that that I am I am and I am enough I am I am that that I am I am and I am I am enough I am that I am that I am and I am enough I am I am that that I am I am and I am I am enough I am I am 
that that I am and I am enough I am that I am that I am and I am that I am enough I am and I am enough I am that that I am and I am enough I am that I am that I am and I am enough I am I am that that I am I am and I am I am enough enough I am I am that that I am I am and I am enough I am that I am that I am I am and I am that and I am I am and I am I am enough enough I am I am that that I am I am and I am I am enough enough I am that I am that I am and I am I am that that I am I am and I am I am enough enough I am I am that that I am I am and I am I am enough enough I am that I am that I am and I am enough I am I am that that I am I am and I am I am enough enough I am I am that that I am I am and I am I am enough enough I am that I am that I am and I am I am I am that that I am I am and I am I am enough enough I am I am that that I am I am and I am I am enough enough I am that I am that I am I am I am that enough I am I am and I am I am enough enough I am I am that that I am I am and I am I am enough enough I am that I am that I am and I am I am I am enough that that I am I am and I am I am enough enough I am I am that that I am I am and I am I am enough enough I am that I am that I am and I am enough I am I am that that I am I am and I am I am enough enough I am I am that that I am I am and I am I am enough enough I am that I am that I am and I am I am that I said I am I am and I am I am enough enough I am I am that that I am I am and I am I am enough enough I am that I am that I am and I am enough I am that I am and I am enough I am that I am and I am enough I am that I am that I am I am I am and I am and I am enough I am that I am 
I am nothing. I am that. I am that. I am. I am. I am enough. That. I am. I am enough. I am that. I am. I am enough. I am that. I am that. I am. I am enough. I am that. I am. I am enough. I am that. I am. I am enough. I am that. I am that. I am. I am. I am that. I am. I am enough. I am that. I am. I am enough. I am that. I am. I am that. That I am. I am. I am. I am enough. Enough. I am that. I am. I am enough. I am that. I am that. I am. I am. I am enough. That. I am. I am enough. I am that. I am. I am enough. I am that. I am that. I am. I am enough. I am that. I am. I am enough. I am that. I am. I am enough. I am that. I am that. I am. I am enough. That I am. I am. And I am. I am enough. Enough.